If you're interested in facilitating high ticket group coaching programs, you're gonna to wanna to watch this video. I'm about to show you what hardwares and what softwares I use in order to run my social media director certification program. So let's dive in. So here's what you're gonna need. A USB adapter, a VGH cable with a Mac adapter to a mini USB, or an HDMI cable, depending on which port you have on your computer. A high-end microphone. This here is a Blue Yeti along with a pop filter. A high-quality 500 gigabyte hard drive. And some blue blocking glasses. So the first thing you should note is that I'm using a mid-2014 uh, MacBook Pro. Now you don't need a Mac in order to run a high ticket program, uh, although it's much cooler to do it that way, uh, but uh, you do need a pretty solid system. So if you're interested in specs around what kind of computer that you need, uh, you just need a modern day computer. First of all, when I'm doing these group coaching uh, sessions, the average session length is about three hours long. I've actually done some classes that went up to four hours. So at about three hours in length, your file um, at the end of it is going to be about 100 to 120 gigabytes. So that's how much space you're gonna need free and you're gonna wanna have some even more extra space free in order to actually edit in and render this file. So in actuality, you need to have about 150 to 200 gigs uh, free on your hard drive in order to do this recording. I went and purchased this hard drive. I got it from Costco. I'm a big fan of Costco. They got good products there. <laughs> and so not, not, not paid enough by Costco for that endorsement. But uh, I got a 500 gig hard drive. This is a 3.0 uh, USB hard drive that can plug right into your Mac. Your Mac's uh, USB ports are also 3.0. You do want to make sure you've got a 3.0 USB uh, connection and not a 2.0. Okay, it's a little bit faster on a 3.0. All right, then on the other side of my computer here, I've actually uh, put in a USB adapter. And the reason for that is that I'm running both a USB camera and a USB microphone on my second USB port on my Mac, okay? So it's important that the hard drive is on its own USB port and that you are, you are splitting the camera and microphone on the secondary USB port. So here we've got our microphone. I'm using a, a Blue Yeti microphone. You might recognize this style in this model. It's a very popular uh, model of microphone. I will say that the only downside to this microphone has been um, because it's situated on the table, anytime I touch the table, uh, it actually creates quite a large sound for the audience. It's really like, like a loud booming sound. Uh, so I've had recommendations from other audio experts that it might be better to have a microphone on an arm, on a stand, so that way it does not catch that booming sound when touching the table. Um, I also invested into this pop filter. This pop filter will give you that radio quality voice. And uh, it was about $12 on Amazon, okay? So any pop filter, filter will do. I've also read that putting a sock over top of your microphone uh, would also work, but in terms of visual uh, style, if you're recording this, you know, you probably don't wanna have a sock over top of your microphone. It might look a little bit funny. Uh, now, when you're using this microphone, one thing you wanna make sure is to look at the settings. So right here, you can see that I have the dial set on the heart icon. You can see that there's four different icons in the back here. And the important thing to note is not only is it on that little heart icon, but also that I've turned the gain all the way down, okay? So I've, I've, I've moved this nozzle, so that way it's all the way down, okay? Now we've got the best sound possible for our online recording, all right? Now next up is looking at this USB splitter. This USB splitter was, I think, $13 on Amazon. I'll put the link uh, below this video so you can go and check it out. You need any USB splitter that is a 3.0 USB splitter. In this case, this dock has just four extra USB, mar USB uh, ports. Uh, it's nothing too fancy. Next up is the camera. Now I'm working out of a co-working space in my hometown of Vancouver, British Columbia. And I'm really grateful that they have these broadcast rooms in the back. These are both meant for private meetings as well as doing online trainings like we're doing right inside of this room right now. And so we actually have a built-in uh, USB camera that's actually connected to the wall here. And there's also an external display that's also connected to the wall. 
But if these two things weren't connected to this wall, all I would need is to purchase a USB camera. Uh, this doesn't look like a very high quality camera. You don't need to invest too much money to this. As a matter of fact, you can actually just use your iPhone or Android phone as the camera itself. All right now your external monitor, again you can go with any model of monitor, I have no specific preferences here. Uh, the one thing that I do really like is being able to have that monitor right in front of me so that way I can continuously make eye contact with the camera as I'm doing the training. So that way it does feel like you're talking to somebody one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. If you have your monitor, your presentation on your computer in front of you and the camera is on the wall, then you know, you're going to be losing eye contact as you look down to see what's going on on your presentation. Now let's take a look at the software that we're using in order to run these trainings. All right, so the two softwares that I use to produce these online trainings is GoToWebinar and ScreenFlow. Now, let me explain why I use both. The way that we structure our online trainings is we schedule a series of online classes that happen live. Now, there's two reasons why I do that. One is so that way people can attend live and, and attend the entire session and soak up all the information right there live with other students. It creates a real learning environment. But the other reason, which is probably more important, is it gets me to actually do the training because if you try to set yourself up to do, you know, a series of uh, online trainings, you're going to film all these videos. I mean, it's a lot of work to do it, especially when no one's watching. If you make a small mistake, you'll just do a retake. I mean, even now while doing this video, we just did like two different retakes of this clip alone. No, sorry, I'm going to back up. The two softwares that we use is GoToWebinar. Now we're live. <laughs> But when I'm doing it live, there is no editing. It's raw. I'm just teaching. It's as if I'm speaking to a live audience. Personally, I find that my performance is actually a lot higher as well because I know people are watching, you know, and there's there's no retake, right? So the online webinar platform software that we've chosen is GoToWebinar. Now, the reason why I chose GoToWebinar is that GoToWebinar has an app that actually installs onto your computer. So you're not just running your webinar off of the web. There's a lot of other webinar platforms out there. They're all 100% on the browser. And when it comes to recording your video through the USB camera, um, as well as your audio and your screen all together, uh, they don't have a great finished product. Um, so what I wanted to do was make it so I could record my, my video of me, as well as my screen, as two separate files, which I was unable to do using some of the browser-based webinar platforms. So to me, I want the, the recording to feel like the live presentation. As you notice, I talk with my hands a lot, right? Um, and I'm using also my own you know, facial expressions and so on. And sometimes I actually pull out a whiteboard and I start whiteboarding right there so everyone can see it. So I like the idea of people be able to see me while I'm doing the instructions. It actually makes it a lot easier for me to explain things. Now, in order to record the webinars, I don't record through GoToWebinar. I actually use a software called ScreenFlow. So hop over here onto my screen now and I'm gonna show you how ScreenFlow works. All right, so this is what the ScreenFlow uh, setup looks like. Basically, you could choose if you wanna record from your desktop. This will be the color LCD. This is the, the screen on your laptop or on your external monitor. And right here it goes, do you wanna record screen from, you know, another audio or video device? In this case, you could actually plug in your cell phone and use your cell phone as a camera. So all you gotta do is just plug in your iPhone or your Android phone into your, uh, one of your extra USB ports, and you can then use that as a, as a recording device. What I do is I record video from the webcam or the USB camera that's on the wall that I showed you. So when I click on this, watch, and now just adjusted it and hello, you know, here I am, right? The video file of me will be recorded as a separate uh, file. So, it, uh, so that way I can actually edit that independently of the actual screen recording. And I'm gonna show you that in just a moment. Uh, the next one down here is on the record audio from, and I've chosen to record audio from the Blue Yeti microphone. Now down here is recording audio from uh, what's coming out of your computer. 
Now, it's important that when you're doing your webinars and your online trainings that you do not check this box. So the reason that's important, if you're interacting with your participants on the webinars or the online trainings, the sound of their voice will come out of the speakers of your laptop and the microphone will pick up that sound. So if you're recording the audio from what's coming out of your computer as well, you're gonna get an echoing sound. So the next thing I wanna show you here is how to change where the file gets saved to. So inside of your ScreenFlow preferences, if you go into right here where it says preferences, uh, you can actually change right here under advanced where the file is being saved to. In this case, I have switched it from my hard drive on my Mac to my external hard drive. And then it will start capturing the footage from your video inside the external hard drive. Over here in general, there's one more kind of pro tip for when you're recording, especially when you're recording longer videos. Uh, right here it says add marker hotkey. Um, I, I've set mine to shift Z. So when I, when I hit shift Z, it just puts a marker inside of my video's timeline. So while I'm editing, I can just find the markers and then I know I have to edit something wherever there's a marker. This has saved me hours, <laughs> hours and hours, because now while I'm doing the, my trainings, if there's something that I know I need to edit out or you know I wanna polish up, I just hit shift Z as a reminder for later and then I can just go right into the part of the video that I, wanna, that I need to edit. All right, so I'm gonna show you an example of that right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this up. And now I'm going to start the recording. All right, I'm just gonna switch this over to uh, my main monitor so that way you guys can see what's going on here. So here we go, I'm gonna go record. And now you can see just timing it up. Okay, now one thing to note as well is on the GoToWebinar control panel, I have yet to turn on my camera. And the reason for that is if you turn the camera on, on GoToWebinar, the camera won't work on ScreenFlow. But after you hit record, you can then turn on your camera on GoToWebinar. So I'm gonna hit that now, and you're gonna see me pop up right here. There I am, hello again. And what you could also do is, if you go right here into your webcam settings, you can go here to always in front, and that way it'll always keep your video in front. And I usually just put that up in the corner, and then once I'm done, uh, once I'm set up there, I'll hit play on my slides, and I've got my external monitor showing my presentation, and I've got my laptop monitor um, that, that I'm looking at right now that shows me the presenter view. So now I could see what slides are coming up next, and I could see what's on the screen in front of me on here as well. But I'm also, as you can see, I'm viewing the entire GoToWebinar control panel as well as I could see kind of what the participants see uh, with me as well. So it kind of gives me an idea of my range of my, my hand motions, or sometimes I pull up a whiteboard and I'll have a whiteboard beside me and I could be whiteboarding and, and so on. All right, so uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Shift Z. So as you can see, it didn't do anything on screen. You can actually see anything on screen of anything happening, but once we finish, uh, when I hit finish on the recording, you're gonna notice that there'll be uh, one, I think blue or purple marker to let me know there's a spot that I need to edit, okay? So let's do that now. So here we go, I'm gonna go to stop recording. And now here's the file. I'm just gonna close this up over here and just put this down. All right, so it just says people can see me, okay. So right there is the purple marker, right? That I was telling you about. And so if I wanted to make an edit there, right, I could just highlight both clips, and I'm just gonna move it up so you guys can see it a bit easier. I highlight both clips, and all I have to do is hit the letter T. T is a command on ScreenFlow that um, allows you to basically cut a clip. Now what's even more cool is, um, I'm gonna go here and undo the, that, and right here on this audio file, this audio file and the video file are actually one right now. If I right click and I go detach audio, it actually separates it. So now this is my video file, this is my audio file, and this is the file of my screen. So I can actually edit them independently. So if I'm in my presentation and then at some point in my presentation, um, the video of me kind of overlays on something that needs to be visible on my slides. I could just edit out a portion of that and I'll just go here and, and edit and now you'll notice that, okay, I'm just gonna turn the sound off on here, but you'll notice that as we're watching, 
and bang, the video comes back, right? If I go back here, you notice you're watching and the video goes away and then it'll come back right after, right? I could do the same thing if I want to just edit all three files at the same time. I just highlight all three, hit the T, and then I can also zoom into this file a little bit more. And you see when there's a big blank spot where I wasn't saying anything, I might want to cut that out. So then I just get right up to the nozzle there and I, I hit T again, I could delete this and then just drag these ones over and voila, you know? And so now I just, I would continue going on and just finding all the markers and editing it out. And once in a while, I'll also just kind of scroll through really quickly to just see if there's any parts where my video of me was overlapped um, on some important information. I've now kind of gotten into the habit of designing my slides in a way that will allow for my video to stay in the corner without overlapping anything. I'll often even just shrink this down a little bit so that way my video is slightly smaller as well. Again, giving you more space on my screen so I don't have to edit out my video as often. Now, I know you're probably wondering why the glasses? These glasses here are blue blocking glasses, all right? And what they do is they block blue light that comes off of your computer screen onto your eyes. Now, when you're doing hour, two hour, or three hour long trainings, especially with two monitors in front of your face the entire time, it can be very straining. I used to do this a lot and I would just feel like dead tired at the end and I just couldn't do anything after a live training. After I picked up a pair of blue blocking glasses, uh, doing these webinars for extended hours, um, I just feel fine at the end. Like it just does not drain your energy as much. So I highly recommend investing in a good pair of blue blocking glasses. I will post a link to the website that I found these on underneath this video so you guys can uh, pick up a pair as well. All right, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, like the page. I'm gonna post more videos like this in the near future. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. Uh, you're gonna notice that we have a whole bunch of videos just like this already on our channel. If you're interested in getting more training like this and going a bit more in depth into some of the trainings that we offer, go to webfriendly.com and you can check out some of the programs that we've got. Uh, besides that, uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, you want me to dive a bit deeper into some of the topics that we covered today, you can leave a comment underneath this video and I will respond and get back to you. All right, thank you and have a great day.